Welcome to Semi-Mindful Banter. Wait, I need you to remember to project, okay? Yep. Not that loud. Yes. Yes. Okay. Like, okay. Just like a normal speaking person. <laughs> <laughs> Hi, my name is Amanda, and honestly, I'm just trying my best. This is my podcast where I talk about whatever I want to talk about because I'm still kind of figuring it out, and I think that's okay. If you want to tune in and come along for the ride, I'd love to have you. You are now listening to Semi Mindful Dance. Welcome to Semi-Mindful Banter. My name is Amanda Doyle, and I am the host of your show, and my mom's birthday is July 14th. I'm here today with my partner, Patrick. He has been on the show before, and last time he was really tired, so today he says he feels a lot more awake and a lot more talkative. I absolutely do. Good. So, do you feel ready? Mm Mm-hmm. This isn't going to be really a real episode. It's going to be a quick little update on my life because I just wanted to, I don't really have time this week. And yeah, I know it's a lame excuse, but we're trying to make up for it with next week. It's going to be a really good episode because we're going to talk about, um, uh, AI. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> what are we going to talk about again? <laughs> AI and how AI can, like the simulation theory and stuff Which like is that. It's a very interesting matrix. topic. Very interesting to me, especially. To only me. Just to you. Just to me. I don't give a fuck. <laughs> um, okay, so first update is that the reason why my week was so busy is because I went to a craft fair this week and I didn't like have my own table. My best friend had a table where she sells a bunch of really good self-care products. If you're interested, shout out Samantha, shout out. I can hook you up. Sam had a table at the craft fair and I participated because she asked me if I wanted to do tarot at the table. And I also had some crystals to sell And she had some crystals. So because she had so much stuff, I kind of sat at the one end and sold crystals and tried to give out tarot readings. It did not work so well, honestly, because I'll tell you why. But And I'm sorry I couldn't be there. Patrick couldn't be there, but he's going to make up for it by trying to get to the next one if he can. I will. Maybe if we were thinking of doing one that's a little bit out of town, and I don't think there's going to be room for him in the car, but maybe him and his mom can come. Because she I'm sure can drive can, out there. We can figure it out. Yeah. Um, but it didn't go well the way I wanted it to. I got all my cards out there. I made like some business cards. I got all my cards out there because Sam's son was handing out cards with his friend. And that was really nice of them to do. But I know they were just trying to like do anything because they're little boys and they're just looking for well not little but yeah they're just looking for something to do there ain't anything wrong with that at all yeah so they helped out a lot actually they gave out samples sam had two bins of samples to give out and i think got quite a few quite a few people to our table because we were down this little hallway like there was everyone in the gym and then they had a bunch of people in like the lobby and then they had just this hallway with like no one down it except for like a few tables and it felt like we were really secluded from everyone so that kind of sucked at the beginning of the event event someone was right away like what the we're not gonna get any attention down here i want to move my table and then some guys like i haven't even got my table yet you said yeah quite a bit of uh, people come down that way yeah we did like and they the thing was I think our samples helped us, but the really big reason why we had everyone come down our hallway is because everyone heard that the lady next to us was giving away candy samples Mm. because she had freeze dried candy and it's so delicious. It was so good. I bought some and I also got some samples. So delicious. That helps. Yeah. So she was giving out free candy right beside us and we were right before her. So kind of like people had to like stop at us right before they got to her. But then again, they wanted to get to her. So they're kind of like, bite. (laughs) Hmm. <laughs> hey, whatever helps. I think Sam did pretty good, and I made what I 
say about thirty five dollars. Like thirty five, forty dollars. Yeah, and the only bad experience, everything was pretty good. I just felt like some people were very judgmental. Like I would, I felt I didn't want to put myself out there at one point anymore because I would say to people when they were walking by, "Would you like a card reading?" And people would give me some sort of look, like I had five heads, and be like, "Oh, I don't want to know that." Or I've never been into that. Like, yeah. I don't care. Like, just say no. You know what I mean? It's so fucking ridiculous. But Well, you can explain what happened to everybody. Yeah. So there was this one lady who near the end, she came, she had come up like an hour earlier. And um, she said she was going to come back because she was interested in the tarot reading. And I said, okay, great. Um, I will be here and she came back and I was like oh you're back and she's like well I said I was going to be back so I like knew right away it attitude was gonna off the side. yeah yeah so she sits down and she looks at my little board which says one card five dollars three cards ten dollars which I thought was a pretty good deal it was and she says so what's the what's the price for the full reading and I said well I'm not doing full readings today because like it's just a little fair so i like i can give you my card but i'm not doing a full reading today i can i'm either doing one card or three cards and so she's like fine i'll do three cards so i do the three cards i give her a little reading and the way i do my tarot is i don't look at to i don't use tarot to look into the future usually when i do a three card i look at the it as situation action and outcome so the first card is like the situation you're in the second card is the action that you can take to better your situation. And then the third card is the outcome that may result. So that's the only way I look at the future. But I'm not pulling all these cards to figure out what's going on in your in your future. Right. And a lot of older ladies, actually, like she wasn't the only older lady who said something about the length of my readings. Like some older lady was like, oh, I've never heard of a reading with less than or with only one card. It's like, well, yeah, you can just pull a card for somebody. Like, hello. Yeah, absolutely. Why not? Um, but anyways, this lady, she looks so unimpressed. And when I'm done, she, because it was really quick. Like, I'm. this is a little craft fair. It's three cards. It's three cards. You know, like, how much am I going to give you? Yeah. And it's also, like, they we're in a, a busy hallway. There's music playing. I'm not concentrated at all. I haven't grounded myself whatsoever. You know right. what I mean? Like, so she looks unimpressed, and then I finish, and she says, that's it? And I'm like, yeah. And she says, okay, well, I hope the full reading would be a lot better because, to me, that was shit. Yeah, and she's fucking rude. Yeah, and it really hurt my feelings, and... Basically, it just made me feel like total shit. And she slapped a 50 down on the table, even though it was only $10, just trying to be fucking difficult. And I said, honestly, I don't want to take your money because if you weren't satisfied, I don't want to take it. And she wouldn't let me not take her money, which I, I'm so upset at that I just wish I didn't have to take it. Fuck her. Yeah, and then I didn't have the change, so... Sam, like, I called Sam over, and I think she could tell on my face that something was wrong, because I, like, was, like, I need change, and, like, I had, like, this face on, and, like, I probably had a tone, too, and she gave change, and she gave it right to the lady, and the lady, like, walked away, and as, as she walked away, I, like, swore under my breath, and Sam, like, asked me what was wrong, and she was really upset, and it's, like, I wish she could have been there and, like, saw it to say something because I knew if she saw it, she would have said something and not let that happen. 100%. I know she would have. But at the same time, like, I needed to, like, stand up for myself. Yeah. And I did by trying not to take the money, I think. Right. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like, by saying to her, I don't want your money. It's, like, dirty money to me, you know? I feel yeah. like I didn't earn it. If she's not satisfied, then you Well, don't I don't want, want it. it. I got it. And then it was even more work for me because I didn't have change for a 50, you know? Like, yeah. I, I came up $25 in my float, so. <laughs> no, I got it. It's, it's I don't good. have a bunch of money. Um, but she was just an ignorant person at the end of the day. Yeah, I don't know why she had to act like that because I was just doing readings and then she walked away and I could tell she was, like, whispering to her friends under her breath and she was, like, she put my card back down on the table and just, yeah. She's just a miserable person. Anyways. Miserable. I'm proud of myself for getting out there. 
I, I, I was really upset after it happened. I was like, this is why I didn't want to do this. You know, like, this is the whole reason. And it was just a lot of work for, I feel like, especially, like, I feel like it's just, like, so much setup, and it's just, it was just over. So it, it felt like such a long time, but at the end of the day, it was over so fast. At least you're able to help Sam. Yeah, and, like, I really helped her out a lot by, like, being there for her at the table because she only had her son with her, and she, like, didn't always feel comfortable leaving him, like, at the table. Like, And last year, she couldn't leave and go to the bathroom and stuff because most of the time he was, like, out talking to people like he was this time. Yeah. So, like, this time, if either one of us needed to leave, like, we could leave the table. It was really helpful having her son there because he went and, like, handed out samples and cards and, like, found out the price of poutine <laughs> mm. and like got poutine <laughs> yeah so no i'm i'm super proud of you for going and sticking it out and doing your best well i appreciate that baby i feel like i i don't know i took a step out of my comfort zone i'm i don't i don't know i feel scared to do another one but i feel like it could be better. I just hate the rejection. I have such a hard time with the rejection. But the more you face, easier it'll become. So I guess there was just two more updates. The biggest update was I wanted to say the reason why I couldn't record a full episode was because I did the craft fair. And I just, I kind of left it a little late in the week. And then I realized on Friday that I had to really get stuff together for the craft fair, plus help Sam at her house house with a bunch of stuff. So it was just felt like a clusterfuck, and it was just really busy. And then today is already Sunday, and I upload on Tuesdays. So yeah, no, understandable. So Thanks we're just happy. doing this this little this little thing. Um, another update was that Patrick is going to be trying something new. He wants to put himself out there more. So we're going to make a deal and Patrick is going to try a new project. And I think Patrick would be really good at, he has a hard time figuring out what he wants to do, right? So mm -hmm. you, I think because you've been through so much, like Patrick's been through a lot of things in his life in terms of like, if you want to say like. Just like uh, drug addiction and. Stuff like that and losing a parent at an early age and I just have a lot of experience with things yeah so I think because he has a lot of experience with different issues in his life I think he could be a good writer and I've told him that before and we've actually explored writing before as an option for him it just never stuck but I think if he had a topic and a good structure for writing about maybe stuff that he's been through and finding a lesson out of it because he always gives me really good advice like you always give me really good advice today when we were having that talk that's why i thought about it because we were having that talk and i was beating up myself and you were giving me good advice and i said to you well you always tell me that I can do whatever I want and that if I really set my mind to it, I can do whatever I want. So why can't you do the same thing? Right. So you're going to try writing. Absolutely. You're going to try writing advice. And just like I want to help him with his um, outlines for now because he's not going to really know where to start, right? Yeah. So. I'll get there, though. Yeah. I think the more I help you to start out with, the more you'll get into the vibe and get comfortable with it. I think you have a lot to say and a lot of experience to go based off of, but Patrick has a stutter, so he doesn't always feel confident speaking. Yeah, I'm pretty uncomfortable with it. So I think this is the best way for him to get out there a little bit more and through this podcast. Yep. Yeah. And then the last thing, I'm kind of nervous about saying this, because if I once I say it in public, it sticks. But I mean, I, I put Patrick out there on the spot, so I got to put myself out there on the spot too. Um, basically, I came up with this idea because remember how the last few weeks, if you've been listening to my podcast, I've been talking a lot about world building and stuff like that and getting into like this vibe of creating a community and just being really interested in seeing how a community can thrive together. 
So I, I guess I want to create my own video game. And I want to, I haven't told a lot of people yet because I'm nervous about it. But I've done a lot of, like, so far quite a bit of work on it in terms of just plans for it and stuff like that. Like, what I would have it be, it's basically like Stardew Valley, but without the focus on farming. So you live in a little town. I like the pixel art a lot, so I think I'd have pixel art. And you live in a little town where something happened to you when you lived in your past place and you basically felt really sad and you needed to start your life up from scratch after sitting in your bed and crying for six months. <laughs> and you move into your parents' house and start from scratch. and you basically get to know the community members in this town and work your way up and become mentally better. Like I just wanted a game that focused on like mental health, you know, but in a fun way. Mm -hmm. So like a life simulation game where the focus is on like getting your character to the best place they can be. So like I have categories for skill levels, like personal relationships, um, and then I have the five love languages intertwined with that each personal in your personal relationship skill level You can take a specialty and they're the five love languages and each skill level has a specialty Stuff like that because you know how Stardew Valley has farming and mining and fishing and uh, Foraging like right. stuff like that. So those are the skills and my skills are going to be like your personal relationship skill and your home and family skill. So there's going to be chores implemented because I think it's really important that people who are learning how to get better, learn how to take care of their surroundings because that's yeah, how you make yourself better is by taking care of yourself and taking care of your surroundings. So there's going to be like little chores and I've created items like mop and bucket and duster and, not actually created them. I've just, when I say created, I mean, I've done all the planning. I've written all the stuff. I've written the stats. I've written the descriptions of the items. I've written how I want things to work. I came up with one character today. Father. Father. I've decided not to give him a name because the, the person who plays the game is going to be player. Have you seen Little Bear? Yes. He calls him father and I mother. I forgot that. Yeah. So it's going to be like Little Bear. Father and mother. Your, your parents are going to be father and mother, and I made father. He's so far in the earliest, earliest iteration of my game possible. We'll see how if this changes in the future. Yeah. That's going to be interesting. To see. It will be interesting. Because I really want to stick with this, and that's why I'm saying something about it. I'm I so like excited I've, to see what happens. I've never stuck with anything in my life, and Patrick's like, well, if you learn how to code, you know you can like do anything, right? Right. Because like I was, I said, I don't know if I could make this feasible. And you can. And I know you can learn how to code. I know if you're dedicated that you can do it. I have no doubt. I did kind of like coding in high school. So, exactly. So, it's right down your alley. Yeah. You got this. I'm already interested in coding, like, the Matrix. Hello. Hmm. <laughs> um, but I created Dad, our father, and he is the Dad. scientist. Dad. <laughs> He is the scientist at Future Advances Science Laboratory, which is a science lab that is dedicated to conserving the town and the environment. And Father works there. He is an intelligent man who likes to put himself out there more than you think. He also has a hard time sometimes finding the balance between logic and emotions. He leans on the logic side because he's so intelligent. Right. But he has a hidden talent. And if you play through Father's arc, like each character will have an arc and a special event that will make some sort of change in their life. So you can have an impact on the character, the people in the town's lives. Right. Is if you play through Father's arc, then he will have a new interaction every week and a new place to go every week. Like, I've already incorporated that into his little schedule is on regularly on Tuesdays, he does this. But after the arc, if you do this and get to know him more and encourage him, then you can motivate him to do something totally new. And he goes to this new location on Tuesday nights and does something different. So earliest iteration of the game, father is a scientist with a hidden talent. Go father. Go father. 
I have no other characters yet. I don't even have Father totally completed because I don't have his any of his likes done, his likes or dislikes done. Well, you just that. began. Yeah. Like you just started. It's all good. Yeah. I want to work on Mother next. And I have the whole map done. Yeah, I saw your map. I'm really proud of my map. I have a really good like map of my town, and I keep just making adjustments to it. Are you able to add screenshots into this or anything? My podcast? Yeah. Um, well, if it's on YouTube, I can put like a picture here of the map. Yeah. You should show the map. Yeah, I'll put a picture here of the map. It's just like a rough draft. Like yeah, it's just pen. a rough draft. and. But it gives you an idea what you're going for. I just added the pet store today. I have to put it on the map. Are you going to draw a new one? No. No? Not unless I'm making any major changes. Yeah. I think for right now it's good. The only thing I need to do right now in order to add the pet store is erase a number and write in pet store. Right. Because I already have a location for it. I already know where it's going to go. Yeah. So I just have to do that. And if there's any major changes, like with the roads or stuff like that, then I will change that. But I also, we have a friend who wants to get more into drawing, so I'm hoping I can motivate her to help me with this project. And Absolutely. Because she's not, like, she's looking for a project, too, so. Yeah, I know. It would be perfect. Yeah. I don't think I have anything else to say. I think that's it. So, thanks for listening. I almost said thanks for watching, but you're not watching. I love everybody. <laughs> you love everybody. I love everybody. Uh, thank you from me and Patrick. And if you want to catch up with me on social media, Patrick doesn't have any social media. So you nope. can't catch up with him. Maybe he will one day. One day. One All day. right now. But I have social media. You can catch up with me on Instagram, threads, or YouTube at the Amanda Influence. And then I'm also on Tumblr at wantingtomakeart.tumblr.com. And... I kind of just post freely on there, so don't judge. <laughs> and, yeah, that's that's it. That's the episode. Thank I'll you see for you next listening. Week. Yeah, thank you for listening. I'll see you next week for a bigger and better episode with a bigger and better topic. Okay, bye. 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 <laughs> Thanks for listening to Semi-Mindful Banter. This podcast was created and produced by me, Amanda Doyle. And our theme music will be linked in the show notes. Again, thanks for watching, and we'll see you next time. That was so much fun.